Influencers, the people and businesses that have the attention of your target audience. Identifying influencers. Who are the people that influence the consumer's purchasing decisions? Well, there's three that we're going to talk about. The first are the experts. The experts are people or businesses that are known and respected leaders in your field or a related field. They include business leaders, personalities, authors, bloggers, could be just about anything. They're the, they're the names that people know that you just love to have in your corner. The next group is positional advisors. Now these are the people that advise or influence the influencer. It could be a spouse, a boss, a coworker, a friend. A number of people can fit this category. Next category is consumers and referrers. Now happy customers like to talk about good deals. But not just them. Also, the people that they talk to also like to talk to others about good deals. Unhappy customers like to talk also, perhaps even louder, and how we deal with them is just as important. And all of this happens on social media every second of every day. The company that I'm going to be working with is RestoreBodyMindSpirit.com. We share information about restoring health and balance to the whole person. We're also an authorized representative for Isogenics Nutrition Products. The target market is primarily women aged 25 to 55 that are interested in health, nutrition, and weight loss. Sales occur primarily in the United States and Canada. Now where are they online? One of the ways that we can discover this is to find the influencers. And that starts with creating a spreadsheet. The first thing I did was to list all the experts. Now several people that I put down were influential in the health and nutrition field. Some of them actually come up in competitors for keywords in organic searches but we don't view any of them as direct competitors but rather as complementary businesses or resources. The next thing I did was to list all of their social media sites. This would be their website, their blog, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Clout, and any other social media platforms that their website or these other channels may have linked to like Pinterest or YouTube and a few others. I learned very quickly that this spreadsheet is something that is going to continually need to be updated. Now let me give you some of the examples of things that I found. The first one that I looked at was Dr. Amen and he was one of the few that's actually already on Google Plus that I found so one of the things that I did was to create a new circle called influencers. Then I ran a search in clout of nutrition and one of the people that we followed for a long time is Dr. Mark Hyman and he came up as being very active in clout and there were some very interesting things that I learned in observing his page here. The first is that 77 percent of his clout score comes from his Twitter account which made it overwhelmingly the source of his highest influence here. A second thing I noticed is that he's heavily influenced or his top influencers are a lot of connections that come from the Huffington Post and some other social media sources. I noticed here in the area where people actually rate you for clout that one individual in particular scored him five times out of six. So that would be a person that I would want to look into a little bit more. Dr. Oz is another name that came up a lot when I would search things, uh, keywords and other things related to our field. His influence primarily has to do with TV personalities. 
Now, one thing I know from working on social media campaigns with other people is that the bigger the personality, the bigger the business, the more likely the individual is not the one that's actually managing their pages, but there's probably a, a team of people that are doing it. So for my purposes, this is not one that I'm going to be interested in right now, but it might be one that I revisit. That, however, led me to another one that I found was very interesting in Dr. Wheel. And he was one of the few that was also on Pinterest, which gave me some other ideas in how influencers might be operating, other interesting things they might be doing, and other categories that might lead you to in looking for other uh, influencers in the field. I want to look at a little bit at how we engage with influencers. And one of the ways that we've been doing it for a, quite a while now is to go to the Facebook or Twitter accounts or, or other social media channels of the people that you're following and engage in the things that they're posting. Now it's very important in doing that that you stay with the conversation, that you're helpful in the way that you answer questions, that you're knowledgeable in the way that you uh, contribute to a conversation, and that you never, ever, ever post anything to do with direct sales or leading to your product on somebody else's page. That would definitely appear spammy. I do, however, think it's important to have the profile that you use to interact on these pages be profiles that will lead back to your business profile, not your personal profile, because that can help others to find you professionally. Another way to engage influencers is to meet them personally. This is my wife Eileen. She actually attended a seminar that Dr. Rahman gave and was able to meet him. Another way that we engage influencers is to take their RSS feeds and send them to our blog. Now that doesn't mean that we automatically post them. A rule of thumb that I think is important to use is that if we're going to repost somebody else's blog that we have to add something intelligent to the conversation. What I liked about this post was, what I learned from this post, why I think this post is important for you would all be important things that w would have to be added to justify why we would repost them. But I do have RSS feeds for influencers that we follow automatically come to my blog so that in the back end of my website I can go over them and easily see which ones would be the ones that we might want to repost or retweet. It's also important to use all of the different social sharing buttons on any blog that you post. Now let's shift a little bit from engaging influencers or as I was more specifically talking about engaging the experts and talk a little bit about engaging the consumers. The hub of engaging consumers is really the website. The website is where you're able to gather contact information for an e-newsletter, your blog, e-commerce, links to all of your other social media sites. I like to create social media accounts for every platform that comes out but I only link the ones that I'm actively keeping up to date. One of the main ways that we currently engage consumers is through the Facebook business page. This is a great way to stay interactive with those that are most in touch with our product. We like to think of our posts in terms of categories so that we have a variety of types of posts. The categories that we work out of are testimonial, informational, motivational, inspirational, educational, comical, and promotional. We find that testimonial and comical are the ones that get the most engagement on Facebook, which kind of makes sense because it is social media, but we think it's important to keep a variety with promotional or direct sales being only about 10% of the posts. Private Facebook pages or Google Hangouts are another great way to engage with consumers that don't want everything they're being said to be seen by other people in that social media platform, but only with other members that share that common interest. Another way we engage consumers is my wife Eileen writes a weekly column for an online newspaper. Our ad also shows up on this page and we repost this article to our blog. This also helps to establish her as an expert. 
We also engage consumers through referrers. In this case, it's one that's a participant in our affiliate program, so they allow us to place an app on their Facebook business page, which allows their members to connect with us in that way as well. In summary, knowing and engaging our influencers, I can see why it's very important to continually update the spreadsheet. That really can help us to see who else connects to that influencer. It's also important to systematically engage in social media conversations and to constantly look for new influencers and following some of these steps will inevitably help us find new influencers and new ways of using social media to reach these ends.